On February 5th, 2021, someone broke into the water supply system of Oldsmar, a small city in Florida. The hacker increased the levels of sodium hydroxide, better known as lye, in the water from the acceptable 100 parts per million to 11,100. Luckily, the operator on duty immediately noticed the change and reduced the levels of lye before the whole city might have been poisoned. It turned out that the cyber attacker was using TeamViewer, a popular tool for remote control of devices. How could someone access critical government systems so easily? Via a third-party app that's been gathering dust on the desktop with no one seeming to care, how was this possible? Unfortunately, the chance of water being poisoned is just one of the risks we face. Here is the list of federal agencies whose software is in dire need of modernization. Some have already hit their 50-year anniversaries. And cybersecurity is not the only concern. About 80% of the IT budget in those departments is spent maintaining those systems. Systems written in obsolete programming languages, containing hardware that's no longer supported by manufacturers, and impairing day-to-day -day operations. Outdated software from the 70s, 80s, and 90s is everywhere in banks, healthcare institutions, airports, and every other company operating on and offline. So let's talk about legacy system modernization and how companies restore their outdated software. Legacy is a kinder way of saying outdated. A legacy system is one that's not just old, but also critical for the business to operate. Everything runs on it, which makes it extremely hard to replace even parts of it, and sometimes even impossible to do so. Ancient software and hardware may simply have no means of interacting with modern technology. And as the parts become unavailable, and specialists who know how to work with them disappear, it will get more expensive to maintain it than upgrade. Of course, there's a psychological element to this. Employees and business owners prefer the systems that they understand. Hey, so take those headphones off. That's mine. Those belong in impound that tape, and that player is mine! Imagine you've inherited your family home. It's been passed down from your great-grandparents, having given comfort to generations. But fresh layers of paint can't protect you from the hazards of lead-based paint applied decades ago. Nor can you ignore wood rot earing away at beams, or 100-year-old wiring that may arc and cause a fire because it can't safely support all of your modern conveniences, and the energy costs that come with heating that huge, poorly insulated house. Does this mean that this house is done for and you should look for a new one? Not necessarily. Smart renovation techniques can modernize it without losing any charm or memories. And some of these thought processes apply not only to legacy housing, but to legacy computer systems as well. To know what to modernize, you need to be very critical about your system and assess how outdated or modern it is. These are the main characteristics of legacy systems. First are obsolete technologies, old programming languages that the community moved on from a long time ago, frameworks that lost their relevance and haven't been updated for years. Basically, technologies that are no longer supported and can be replaced by newer versions. The second is poorly planned core architecture that doesn't allow the system to scale and perform at its best. It's like the Weasley's house in Harry Potter, except in real life. There's no magic to support that monstrous structure. Another sign of degradation is when the system doesn't support integrations anymore. If the software can't communicate with other systems, it will eventually die out. Next is code rot. The term speaks for itself. Unattended code degrades over time and no longer fits in the surrounding environment. It also happens when it's changed without seeing the whole picture. For example, when new developers are asked to operate code they're not familiar with, a common situation for legacy systems. Another characteristic of the legacy system is a bad user interface and experience. Poor design that evokes nostalgia for the 90s is the first indicator that the system hasn't been updated for a long time. And it's not just painful to see, using it is equally frustrating. And finally, the system's poor performance. When it's too slow, crashes all the time, and takes an eternity to perform simple tasks, your efficiency suffers and your temper flares. 
The modernization workload will depend on the severity of these components. Are the frameworks too old to upgrade? And how soon does the code stop making sense? Or maybe the interface doesn't look half bad, but there's no way to add new functionality to the disordered architecture. Whatever the case is, there are three common approaches to modernization. Let's start with the simplest and most popular modernization method, system migration to the cloud. Migrating some or your whole systems to the cloud means moving your infrastructure from on-premises hardware to the remote hardware owned by a distant provider. Operating in the cloud is cheaper, requires fewer IT resources, and allows you to grow indefinitely. But you're still left with a tangled mess of legacy code and architecture. Netflix started their cloud migration journey this way. But after realizing that they've simply moved all their problems and limitations to the new data center, they decided to change how the whole company operates to take advantage of cloud capabilities. Many businesses follow the same path. The system is somewhat modernized for the move to take advantage of cool new cloud features. This process called replatforming is the perfect combination of effort and outcome. Businesses often choose to start with replatforming their database because storage is one of the largest bottlenecks for growth. Sometimes though, the system can benefit from smaller changes and improvements. For example, by code refactoring, when the code is cleaned and edited without actually changing its function. Cohesive, readable code is easier for newbies to work with, not to mention that it also prevents the dreaded code rot. New integrations or even custom-built modules can make older systems more functional and modern. This doesn't require any architectural changes, but will result in a greater return on investment and competitive advantage in a shorter amount of time. Of course, smaller, incremental changes are easier to deal with, but be aware of one looming danger. You can't indefinitely support the decaying application. Sometimes you have to bite the bullet and agree to complete re-engineering. Risky and expensive, but extremely rewarding and flexible. This approach helps rewire the whole product and create exactly what the market and users need. When the technologies are no longer supported or expensive to license, and the company has a whole new vision for its IT operations, the legacy system should be redesigned and re-architectured. One popular method is going from a monolithic architecture to microservices. The legacy software is usually built like a monolith. All elements are compiled together and can't be updated separately. Microservices architecture, on the other hand, allows you to create small, independent services each dealing with its own process. These services are physically separated and can be built using different technologies, whichever fit their purposes best. Harnessed by Netflix, Amazon, Spotify, Walmart, and many more businesses, microservices also allow for gradual re-engineering. You take one part of your legacy monolith, replace it with a microservice, then take another part, and do this until the whole application is transformed. But sometimes, even total transformation can't fix all problems and the system needs to be replaced. Legacy limitations, outdated practices, and old thinking patterns can be so ingrained into the company's culture that it makes sense to just scrap your old tech and replace it with a custom or off-the-shelf solution with entirely new business logic. What do you need? How do you choose your modernization path? If you're still attached to the legacy system, go with the cloud. You rarely can go wrong with cloud migration. There are different ways to approach the cloud, and with the right team to guide you in the process, you can finish the transition within a year. This will allow you to fix the existing problems with new technology without sacrificing the whole operation. If you have a fairly modern technology foundation, a team of skilled IT people who know how to improve it, and some parts of the infrastructure already in the cloud, go the easy way and improve what you have. Remove design and architectural bottlenecks. Ensure the system is aligned with your tech goals and keep a schedule of future upgrades, making sure you don't roll back to the old ways. Finally, consider total re-engineering or replacement. If your system is constantly crashing, doesn't allow for any integrations, 
And the only IT guy in the company is maniacally struggling to keep it all together? You need a revolutionary approach. Some say that a system should be rewritten every three to five years. Well, this is not realistic. Total modernization takes several years, and like any renovation project, misses several deadlines and survives many changes in the initial plan before it's finished. And of course, it can rarely be done alone. Legacy software is, after all, a legacy. It reflects the company's history and values, and it's never totally abandoned for newer, shinier things. Developers use it as a foundation to create an updated product with functionality that matches current demand and standards. And when treated well, the aging code base, architecture, and interface won't be a burden and modernization can become a healthy cycle rather than a painful necessity.